Hello, this is this month's forecasting forum. So let me go to the first page here. And so as always with these forecasting forums, I will ask some questions. So how many of you know what Chiron is all about? Because we're gonna be covering Chiron today. And feel free to tap into the chat window if you are here live. And if you are watching this as a recording, you know, feel free to participate as I'm asking the questions and just, you know, raise your hand or say me or I don't know anything or just feel free to, to verbalize even, even if you're alone at home. Uh, just because it, it's nice, um, you retain a lot more of the uh, information when you're actually actively participating. They've done a study on that. So um, how many of you know what Chiron is all about? All right. Um, and then how many of you have Aries planets in your birth chart? Anybody? I've got Chiron and Aries. Anybody has Chiron has other planets in Aries? I know some of you do from the charts that I have here. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that at the end with our questions. Um, hi, Deb. You have Mars and Aries. Wonderful. Okay. And then how many of you uh, feel affected by the Mercury retrograde phases? So in your experience, if you think back over, you, over your lifetime, uh, do, you, do you usually get to be affected quite a bit or does it not phase you at all what Mercury retrograde is doing or when it's happening? Does it affect you sometimes more than other times maybe? Something to maybe think about and contemplate, like how does the Mercury retrograde actually affect you? All right. So um, I just want to say thank you so much for being here with me today for the next uh, hour and a half. Hopefully we'll, we'll be able to pack everything in in 90 minutes. And um, uh, I also want to thank you if you're watching this as a recording and taking the time to watch the recording. And for those of you who are new, which I don't think we have a lot of new people today, um, also, I'll keep this part short because you already know this part a little bit about me. Um, I'm originally from Austria and I've been studying astrology since the early 90s. And here I am now uh, having my own business, my own online community. And so it's exciting how this all has evolved since uh, you know I first started opening my first astrology book so and at the time I would have never guessed you know like that this this is where I would end up so it's, it's really quite exciting anyways so the agenda for today is that we're going to be um, talking about the Chiron station phase um, in Aries which will come up uh, it starts on June 23rd uh, and it will last until July 23rd. So for a whole month, we have this energy of Chiron slowing down and moving more slowly than normal, which makes it more exalted. So whenever a station planet happens, it makes the energy bigger of that, of that particular planet. And then the retrograde phase starts on July 8th and goes for five months until December 12th. This happens on a yearly basis. Uh, most of the outer planets or asteroids uh, will go retrograde around four to five months out of the year. So that's quite normal. Um, so that will be its yearly retrograde phase where we get a chance to tap into the Chiron energy more from an inner internal place, more knowing like how are we actually connected to that energy within ourselves. Now we'll also cover the second Mercury retrograde phase of the year, which will start in Leo and end in Cancer. So we'll start in an early degree of Leo and then retrograde back into Cancer. Um, and that will be from July 7th until the 31st. That will be the retrograde phase. But of course, with a Mercury retrograde phase, there also comes the station phases and the shadow phases. So the shadow phase is something that we just entered Actually, we're, we're, we're going to be entering it this week on Thursday. So we're going to be entering it on June 20th. Uh, and it will last until July 7th when the retrograde phase begins. So the shadow phase is always comes right before the retrograde phase starts. And then also after the retrograde phase ends, there will be a second shadow phase, which will be from July 31st until August 13th. And these shadow phases are basically when the planet moves through the same territory 
that it's also going to move through when it is retrograde. So on the 20th, Mercury reaches the place um, where, um, so that will be almost 24 degrees of Cancer. And when it reaches 24, almost 24 degrees of Cancer, it will start to go through the, the same territory that, that it will also go through once it goes retrograde. So it will start to go retrograde all the way back to 24. So that is something that it will, that, that territory is something that Mercury will cover three times. The first time during the shadow phase, the second time during the retrograde phase, and the third time once it's gone direct again and then it moves in its second shadow phase. Right, so that's why it's called the shadow phase because it's a territory that's being <clears throat> that's basically being revisited several times. Okay, so um, and and the shadow phases, I should say too, the shadow phases are also important. The reason why that's important is is when we when we make any new decisions or start anything brand new during the Mercury shadow phase we're going to have to basically revisit that same decision several times um, before we can possibly move forward with, with this. So it's important to, to take a look at the shadow phases as well, especially if you're planning on like, let's say buying a big ticket item or selling a big ticket item or doing anything with a communication device, right? So like a, like a cell phone or an iPad or a computer, like if you, if you want to buy or sell one of those things, um, you might want to wait until the shadow phases are over or do it before the shadow phases begin, right? So um, <clears throat> now the Mercury station phases are June 26th until July 18th and then July 26th until August 6th. Uh, August, yeah, July 26th until August 6th. A lot of sixes here. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so basically, the station phases is when Mercury is most exalted, when it's the strongest, right? And so there's going to be a lot going on during the station phases. We're going to try and think about a lot of things, and a lot of things will come up that need to either be taken care of or things that we that we've had on our list for quite a long time, and now we're like, okay, we need to do it. Um, <clears throat> now. Uh, all of this is also happening during eclipse season. And that's why I want to mention very briefly eclipse season, even though we will not talk about the eclipses until next month. So when, uh, when we do our next forum, we'll talk about the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse in more detail. But I wanted to mention, you know, we're already moving into eclipse season this week on June 22nd, and that will last until August 31st. So uh, eclipse season um, is basically a time, right, 10 days before the first eclipse, and then it, it goes all the way until after the second eclipse or the last eclipse has completed its, its cycle. So, um, so basically this eclipse season will end on August 31st with the new moon, the next new moon that happens after the lunar eclipse. Now, that phase between 10 days before the solar eclipse and then until that new moon, we're really experiencing sort of like a heightened energy of um, something's recalibrating in us. And what is recalibrating is it's sort of like we're receiving an upgrade because the eclipses are always connected to the moon nodes. And the moon nodes represent our soul's journey. So from a soul's perspective, we're receiving sort of like a, a new sense of like, this is, your, this is your direction that you're currently going in for the next six months. So eclipses are very heightened uh, energy portals that uh, help us to move more into the direction that we're needing to go individually speaking, but also collectively speaking. And um, therefore, sometimes um, we experience abrupt endings of some sort, we experience abrupt beginnings of some sort. Um, so one thing to remember with any ending or beginning that happens during uh, eclipse season, it's important to remember that 
um, these endings and beginnings are uh, supporting our direction that we need to go in uh, on a soul level. Um, so even if in the moment it seems like, oh, this is terrible that this happened or what am I going to do with this or what's happening here? You know, if we don't quite understand, if we're getting a little bit um, confused or if we're feeling a little bit uncertain about the shifts that are taking place, it's really important to remember that this is all happening for, the, for our highest good. And so if you can stand in that place, you know, this is happening for my highest good that would really support you uh, for, those, uh, for those weeks, for, the, for those six weeks. It's all, I think it's almost six weeks, right? Five weeks, six weeks. Um, all right, so um, let me just also say um, very quickly that I, um, I have most people's charts who are on the forum today, so we probably won't run into this, but in case somebody, I don't have someone's chart and you have a question for me, then, uh, uh, I can't pull up charts during the forum, so you're just going to have to tell me, you know, uh, the degree or the sign or the house or whatever that you have questions about in your chart uh, so that I can uh, answer it as best as I can. Um, and I'm happy to answer most questions. However, if it's something that's taking up too much time and, and takes us away from what we're covering today, uh, with the forum, then I will ask you to book a one-on-one -on -one reading. I hope that makes sense. All right, so um, that's it. Let's go to the next page. <clears throat> Just have to find it, my next page. Okay, yeah, let's go to the overview uh, of June. Let's see, so we have, we have this overview. You all have this in your email, so even if you watch this recording, this is, this is attached to your email, so feel free to take that to either open it up on your computer or print it out. Um, so um, basically what we're going to be covering today is we're going to be talking about the, um, so down here, all of these things down here pretty much, you know, like the shadow phase and then uh, eclipse season I already talked about, then um, Mercury starts its station phase in Leo and then Chiron station intensifies. Um, Chiron station starts in, in Aries here. So basically the way it works is with these station phases, right? So the planet starts to slow down and then it starts to slow down some more until it comes to a halt. And when I talk about the, a planet station phase, it's usually when it starts to slow down. Then when I talk about that a station phase intensifies, that means that the planet slowed down some more and then it comes to a halt and starts to switch direction so it either goes retrograde or if it's already retrograde it starts to go direct so these that's what happens with the station phases so even when a planet has already gone direct it will still move quite slowly because it has to catch up on its own speed right so it's slowing down slowing down some more halting then going going retrograde, but still going quite slowly, speeding up a little bit, but still going slowly, and then getting to its regular speed. So you, we will see that it's sort of like an arc, right? And so during that time, the energy of that planet is, is quite intense. So let's, let's, start with, um, let's start with Chiron, right? So, um, or before we move to Chiron, let me also show you this this here, this overview, which is for July. And in July, uh, we have, um, if we go a little bit further down here, we can see that um, Merc the Mercury station phase intensifies here on July 4th. Then Mercury goes retrograde and Chiron goes retrograde. Within a day of each other, they, they go retrograde, right? So that's something to, to keep in mind is that Mercury and Chiron actually go retrograde like within 24 hours of each other. So that's going to be a very intense time right around that time where they both go retrograde because both planets are going to be very strongly um, vibrating in, 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 within us, right, and also in the sky. And so we'll experience that quite strongly. 
the good news is, is that both of them are in fire signs and they are both in, in a very similar degree, which means that they're actually trining each other. So during that time when it happens, they're going to do it, make a trine with each other during the station phases and the, when it comes to a halt and going retrograde in the beginning. Um, and so that means that there's some kind of a harmonious relationship between our thinking and our uh, current healing that we're undergoing or that we're becoming aware of, right? So because Chiron is about the wounded healer, it's about our healing journey, it's about how do we become whole. And, um, and so there is a, um, a, a positive connection between our thinking body and our a process of wholeness or becoming wanting to be whole right and 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 finding some healing around that okay so let me uh, start with Chiron so I have this beautiful Chiron quote that I emailed you guys because I wanted you to have this this is some this is one of the handouts that I hand out uh, during the uh, the Chiron workshop so for those of you who've watched that workshop already uh, who are members you uh, you already have this handout. Um, for those of you who are not a member yet or who are new as a member and who haven't had a chance to watch this workshop yet, I highly recommend it. It's a fantastic workshop. Um, it's it's a it's an audio recording um, of a workshop that I gave several years ago in Chicago. And what I love about this handout is, is I, I wrote down a quote by a German astrologer, and her name is Eva Stangenberg. And um, I just love this quote because it's so accurate to how Chiron operates, right? It's basically there's like this separation that we're experiencing between the physical world and the spiritual world. There's some kind of like something happens. In, in our upbringing. And I should also say very often, this separation that we're experiencing, we're experiencing it often because it's being handed down to us from generation to generation. So in our own family, this has been, this wound, this Chiron wound has been something that's been operating in the background for our parents already or for for, for one lineage, the, the paternal or the maternal lineage, in, in a quite strong way. And then you as a child, you have soaked up that wound and you have also experienced your own wounding with it. So it's something that's, that's actually an um, ancestral um, um, handing down of, of something. So that's important to remember that, that either one of our parents or both of our parents have a similar wound to us and, and have therefore passed it on. And we might have experienced it slightly differently to them, but there's still sort of like a, a resonance. So what you want to look at is the sign, for example, the sign that Chiron is in will show you the resonance of what the, what, what's been handed down to us. So if you have Chiron in Pisces, for example, then what was handed down to you was this disconnect to it to to the intuitive to the intuitiveness or or feeling separate um, from uh, from everyone around us because we are very sensitive or because we have a very strong intuition and we're not quite able to tap into it because it's not accepted to uh, it's not something that that we feel is safe to tap into. Um, it could be something like that, or there is, there is, there is a sense of, you know, feeling that we're, that we're insecure in how we want to tap into it because nobody has ever shown us how to tap into our intuitiveness and how to tap into our, our sensing and knowing and, and this divine connection that we have with things around us. We might have also felt really, um, separate from God or separate from the universe, you know, feeling abandoned by God or abandoned by the universe with, with Chiron and Pisces. For those of us who have Chiron and Aries, that separation happened on a more, either on a physical level, uh, it could be like feeling like we, we couldn't quite physically connect to our own bodies or to our own personality, like there was something wrong with being ourselves, um, or also in connection to aggression. Uh, so Chiron and Aries, because Aries is a very assertive 
a sign which when that's over expressed it becomes aggressive and so if we've experienced um, wounding because of other people's aggression or because aggression was something that was uh, or assertiveness was not uh, expressed in a balanced way or in a healthy way in our environment growing up we would have felt very separate or it wasn't safe to, to be aggressive or to express our aggression or to express our assertiveness, right? So that would be sort of more like a, a Chiron wound. It could also be a, a sexual wounding, you know, identifying with the, uh, the gender that you are, you know, like that that was not um, accepted, that, that it was okay to be who you were. Um, so these are some of the things that we're experiencing with Chiron. And the way to really um, heal Chiron issues is by accepting that there, there is something missing, by accepting that we're not whole, that there is something that we are human, basically. So Chiron is really the place in our chart that shows us where we are human, where we have a deficit of some sort or a um, uh, where we're not whole right where we don't feel whole or where we're not whole and um, and through the power of compassion and understanding and acceptance we start to heal that part of ourselves we start to connect to that part of ourselves in a healthy way and we can start to heal others and bring this healthy expression towards other people towards you know, either other individuals or a larger, larger group of people or society, depending on where it's at in your chart. Okay. I hope all this makes sense. Debbie, uh, is saying, uh, what does Chiron in Aquarius mean, please? Okay, great. Thanks for that question, Deb. So if you have Chiron in Aquarius, um, it's very much about feeling different from, from the people that you were surrounded by, not feeling like you're not fitting in, you're too different. It feels like you're too different. You're not, you, even though it, it basically means you're very special and yes, you are very different, but the wounding is that you feel like it's not special, that you are too different and you can't connect, you can't fit in. There's a sense of separation or abandonment that we're feeling because we're too different. Does that answer your question, Deb? Does that resonate? So, um, so yeah, so wherever you have it, there is a, there's a deficit that we feel, right? There's something, it's almost like you think to yourself, well, there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me because I am that or because I'm not that, right? So, so that's the sense that we get with wherever we have Chiron, whether that's by sign or by house. And then, of course, the ruler of Chiron will indicate that as well. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at, at the Chiron station chart so we can see where this takes place in our own chart, how this is connected to our own personal charts, okay? So I wanna thank you so, so much for hanging in there, for being with me. Let me just see what's, what, what people are saying. Thank you, Sonia, for providing us with valuable information to prepare us for what is to come, insightful and lightning. Thanks, Julian, I appreciate that, thanks so much. And Aida said, yes, very much so. This was helpful. Okay, good. Thanks, Aida. And yes, so have a fantastic rest of your day. Have a beautiful, beautiful week and just hang in there. We're, we're starting, we're coming into eclipse season and things are a little intense right now. <laughs> hang in there, guys. All right. So have a good one and feel free to stay in touch with me via the weekly forecast and the videos as well. Okay, that way that can also be helpful too. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.